dance, I just wanna see you dance. Well, I'm really care, you got a man. We just really care about your friends. I just hope you understand. Well, I'm really care, you got a man. We just really care about your friends. The spirit of Detroit. You tube like comment subscribe for more thought-provoking content like this click the bell icon button it's your host avery giovanni this is spirit of detroit podcast um man it's been a, it's been another two weeks <laughs> man i hate doing videos man i really do <laughs> can't just wait till the facts come out I can't wait to the draft where the facts come out and we all going to get on the same page because we have different pages that we're on. One fans like Jalen Carter, other fans I like myself don't. It's just all around. OK, the Detroit Lions, Brad Holmes, preferably need to get one thing right. And he Brad Holmes, preferably has this has eluded Brad, Brad Holmes for like three years. This has eluded him getting this one thing right. Now, we can say, hey, Avery, what do you mean? He's a great GM. I see the little stories. He's done virtually nothing wrong. I see the stories. Oh, we have more cap space and he's got out of bad deals. I see, I'm the only one that holds this man accountable. That's crazy. It's not that I'm like totally against him. I see what he's doing. And I, I literally picked his players for him last year. But the thing I'm seeing with Brad is that uh, defensive tackle has been an issue. And for somebody who was glorified for pounding on the table for Aaron Donald, that success with the defensive tackle, nose tackle position, especially the three tech defensive tackle, has eluded him. What do we have to show for it? Well, we have a Lee McNeil. And that's probably his best defensive tackle pick to date. And Aleem McNeil is all right. Aleem McNeil is a dog. To me, I have no problems with Aleem. He is what he is. Uh, big dude. Short dude. He is that, that nose, that shade. He is that guy that's stuff to run. You know, I have no problem with Aleem. I think Aleem is great. But that's your best dude, and he's all right. Um, in terms of the draft, we got Onzerike, on, on Onzerike. We haven't seen this fool in it forever. Uh, if y'all seen him, I didn't see him. <laughs> he don't show up on tape when he play. When he play, he got a one tackle. They say he dominant. You know, some YouTube losers will say he dominated and all this other nonsense after one game, and we never heard from him again. And then next, you have Joshua Pascal. Joshua Pascal is he's a good player. We seen him in the Dallas game do some things, and he was remarkably successful against that Dallas front, which, which, which surprised me. I had a third round grade for him. They chose him in the second, and I understand why. High value character, high value dude. Uh, played, he can play in as well as inside. He's a good three tech. I think he needs to develop still, but he has some of the best hands and, and best ability to disengage with the blocks. But we need to fix. The defensive tackle position because if we're drafted every year we drafted a defensive tackle even in one draft we drafted them twice so we know the issue and we still putting up the same numbers of the run game we still putting up the pressure numbers from the inside the interior and we're still lackluster in that department so brad holmes the pressure goes on brad holmes to fix this issue um in my estimation Kobe, Tur Kobe Turner is the best defensive tackle in the draft. Uh, I would say Kobe is the best defensive tackle in the draft. Someone's going to pick him in the third or fourth round, and they're going to get a steal of the draft. The physicality that he has in the game, he's a tough mama jamma. Okay, he's even better in my estimation than Jalen Carter because Jalen Carter will go games where he's dominant and he disappears. So this dude is always on. He's always on target. I love Kobe Turner. I also like Sika Ika. Okay. I also like my man out of uh, a Baylor. He's a nose tackle. We have we have to feel that again because we don't know what Aleem going to do in two years. So there are players there. Now, in regards to Kobe Turner, he's a three technique. He is what Joshua Pascal should be. He is what Jalen Carter is, but for a lesser dime. I think if he went to Georgia, 
um, or if he went to Alabama, he would be one of those guys in the draft where you draft in the second round or the first round because the defensive tackle, as much as you want to say in this draft, oh, we can get great defensive edges and all this other stuff, the interior position falls off a cliff after Jalen Carter. This is this guy racked up better numbers than Jalen Carter. So I, I, I predict that we should draft him. The Lions should go get this guy. Brad Holmes is already noticing this guy. I'm trust me. Because he has to he has to figure it out. <laughs> he has to figure this defensive tackle shit out. Um, but I don't mean to sound like a hater, okay? And I want to do the Kobe I want to do the Kobe Turner, you know, film session and all this other stuff. But uh, the, the, be that as it may, the issue is this. The issue is we are in a position where we have a luxury pick at six. No matter how you frame it, it's a luxury pick because you have the wide receiver you want. You have the quarterback you want. You have a running back. You have you have tight ends. You have like everything you want to do. You have the pressure, guys. You have... Uh, 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 you have you brought in corners. It's a luxury pick. At 18, that's when you got to get down to business. You got to really pick at 18, whether it's corner, whether it's offensive line. But the luxury pick is six, and I think at six, if you go Jalen Carter, you need insurance, and Kobe Turner is the best insurance. Not just for the off the field stuff, just for the player, and in, in, you know. Just for the numbers, you know, you have Isaiah Bugs under contract. You have guys under contract, Lee McNeil. You know, you got rid of Michael Brockers. You brought in some guys. You might as well just have a rotational, you know, two defensive tackles, get a defensive end in a draft. I also hear grumblings that Tyree Wilson is very, is on the Lions radar. He's very like, the Lions are very infatuated with him. And that's all that's to me that's old dan campbell because the length the athleticism the freak um people fall in love with tyree wilson not in terms of number seven sacks is not gonna get you love but it's the it's the athleticism the length the height the vertical the 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 arm length those things are classic defensive end things um Ju- think julius peppers if i could teach this guy this position he will be a freak of nature he will dominate uh i like tyree wilson in the interior if you draft tyree wilson at six i won't have a problem with you if you put him in the interior i don't think he's a true defensive end in terms of the pressure that he gets but I like the ability to run stop. I like the ability to get to the quarterback or create hurries and the pressures. But I don't like the sack numbers um, to play defensive end in this defense. You know, that might be an issue for him, but he is talented enough body wise. He is basically Trevon Walker this year. Trevon Walker should have never went first. Trevon Walker should have went somewhere in the top 10 But he shouldn't have never went first in a draft. And Tyree Wilson's the same player. But Tyree Wilson actually has production. So you have to look at him and take him seriously. Uh, He's a bit stiff. But when he hits you with that stab move, he's one of the best in the league. But getting him is like now you have to wait four years for this to mature this freak of nature who's six six you have nobody like this guy on this team you know you may have aiden hutchinson and that's good but aiden hutchinson's way more polished he's way more of a pass rusher he can put his hand in the dirt he's better with his hand up two point stands i think when you talk tyree you're taking uh you're taking a huge risk at the end position but in the interior i think he could be whoa he could be a freak he could be dominant so even that, you know, is, is something that uh, Dan Campbell and Brad Holmes have to work on. Like, look, if you draft at six, you got a luxury pick. You might as well pick something. Because to me, I've seen mocks where Jalen Carter falls to them consistently, falls to them. I don't know. I've seen mocks where Will Anderson falls to them. And if we're going after 
these two players, I mean, I'm going to be happy with either one of them. Uh, Will Anderson, Jalen Carter, even happy with Tyree Wilson. I'm going to know that, look, you need to fix this defensive line. Your calling card to even get you a scouting job was the defensive line. And like, this needs to be done. So that's what I have for you today. This is Spirit of Detroit. I really hope that, you know, um, Brad Holmes fixes this. <laughs>